Okay, so, you know, eh. I'm just, I just gave you my impression, I don't know. Uh, and so I can't really microanalyze because I'm not, no, I'm just speculating, right? I've said, okay. So, um, so now Sullivan had landed a valuable little scoop, thanks to me. I emailed Sullivan. You put me in a tight spot, I said. You didn't visit as a reporter. You were my guest. If you or John John cannot see the point or amusement of my piece, he shot back, then you have truly become as brain dead as he is. That went well, I thought, and carried the magazine into John's office to confess the bad news. He nodded when he saw me. He had already read Sullivan's article. I'm sorry, I said. I had no idea he would do that. He never told me he was going to write something. I don't want him in this office again, John replied, and his voice had a chill I'd never heard in it before. He's not welcome here. Shaken, I walked out, determined to keep my head down, stay out of trouble, and do my work. I had never guessed that I would have to shield John from other members of my own profession, even my old friends, but now I knew. Yes, you know, uh, yes, I'm getting like, um, you know, I heard earlier today, or no, maybe it was yesterday, Terry, uh, um, I think it was Richard Neer, talking about Terry Cap of Chicago, the, the band Chicago, had committed suicide at some point, and then I was, you know, the way I talk to the radio sometimes, and I'm saying, well, is he not, is he somebody else who's not dead? So what I'm getting is like, and I said this, I said this to myself or the radio before, like this surreptitious trail of death and destruction. Anybody who might, you know, uh, for example, with any rock groups or rock singers, uh, anybody who records I might listen to or whatever, something bad happened to them. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, in other words, somebody sabotaging anybody who looks favorably upon me, and I guess JFK Jr. was also one. Um... <laughs> 